Hey, there's a lot of people talking about, hey, Glendon, what's the best deal on your products? And it is the two-month HMS special. That's the best deal. There's a lot of information there. It will literally take you three months to go through it. That's the deal. Tons and tons of information. You'll be doing something new and different every day going through the course. So check it out. Get it. It's right here. Jump on it today. What's going on, people? A rainy day in Georgia. I was having a conversation with someone last week. And it got a little heated. It was a consult. First time it ever happened. There's this person who has a great life. And that's the problem. And I know you're going like, what's wrong with having a great life? Their life is so great that they will never aspire to anything else. And when I say great, everything's taken care of. They receive some money from one of the parents. And essentially, they are never going to really busted. And when I say busted, I mean do something significant, radically different, astounding, and awe-inspiring because they don't have to. If you watch this channel for a while, you realize at one point I was homeless, I was going through some stuff. I had reached a point where I had to do something. I had to do something. It wasn't like, oh, this is going to work out. I had to make it happen. I had to create new energy for myself, a new situation, a new way of doing things. I had to create it. Essentially, if you aren't faced with a crisis, most people are not going to change. Some of my best students from the Hustler Mindset, from other consulting, from other books, were people that had their backs against the wall. I mean, some of the stories I know of are just like, I just go back over them to inspire myself. Because, put it bluntly, for many of you, and I'm not really trying to be super mean, but for many of you, you will need a personal crisis, some type of cataclysmic event, calamity, something extremely major to shift and push you in a new direction. It's going to take something that huge for most of you to really bust it. And that's something that I've come, that's a conclusion that I came to about two years ago and the conversation last week just confirmed it, just made it even more, just inscribed it on my brain, just carved it in deep letters on my cortex because this person was like, well, no, it's this and no, it's that. And no, I'll tell you what having a personal tragedy will do to you. When I was in the storage auction business, I had a lot of things go wrong. You know, there's a whole bunch of things I don't really talk about because they're embarrassing. I don't want to think about it. They were fucked up. I bought a unit that had cages, metal cages for chickens, other livestock. Didn't know crazy ass smell but I bought it anyway and this unit came with six other units that were equally foul pun intended I got this stuff and like what the hell am I going to do I mean it was crazy it was over the top nuts so I get this unit and it's it's, it, it's, a, it's just it's fucked up it's totally fucked up. I've got myself in this situation. Totally situa totally ugly situation. 
I was with uh, public storage. I had to do something. Public storage would ban your ass in a heartbeat. So, I had to bust it. I had to get the units cleaned out. What did I do? I went out and bought more units. And I got a jackpot unit, which gave me the income to help pay to get someone else to clean out those units. Because I'm telling you, what happened scared the shit out of me. It was... I got completely covered up. I was in a situation that was just like, how the hell am I going to get out of this? And when you have, and that's just really a small thing. Because, you know, you have people out there who are facing cancer. You have people out there who are facing unemployment. You have people out there who are facing joblessness. I, I mean, when I say joblessness, and there's unemployment. Unemployment, you get fired. Joblessness, you haven't been able to find decent employment for years you go from job to job low paying job jobs you hate there are people who are stuck in that category and I think if they were factored into the equation of unemployment be about 25 percent because you, you can't say they don't have a job but they don't have a job that makes enough money for them to have a in my opinion a decent life but that's another video but you need a personal tragedy. Now, I will go back to the real tragedy. When I was homeless, when I was living in the boarding house, when I was going through all kind of crazy stuff. Living in a boarding house with crackheads, crazy people, uh, insane stuff that was going on. After hitting the bottom... I came up with some of the most innovative tactics, strategies, call it whatever you will, schemes, unethical, whatever, that liberated me from that bullshit. I was put in a position where it was either sink or swim. It was either fly or crash. There was no, well, you know, if this doesn't work out, I could fall back on the wife or... I've got this inheritance that's coming, or I have this one. No, none of that. It was either fly or crash, sink or swim, kill or be killed. Those, And I'm going to tell you what happens when you're put in those situations. All of the distractions are eliminated. See, right now, you have a ton of distractions. You think that... Uh, you can't get the life you want because the economy or the there's this going on. No, no, you have a lot of distractions. When I didn't watch television for two years, it wasn't because I didn't want to watch television. I was too poor to afford a television and cable. So I didn't have it. And then I didn't watch television for two years. During that two year period, I did more writing, more reading, more educational stuff, more grooming the G-verse, and then understand what was going on. I was forced to use my time in a constructive manner because the distractions were eliminated. No TV. I had a computer and the internet, and I was on it, and I taught myself stuff, and I taught myself how to format hard drive. See, this is the thing. And this is why prisoners are so yoked in jail. All of the distractions are eliminated. They may have a substandard diet, but they have focus. They get up at a certain time, they go to bed at a certain time. All of the distractions are eliminated. And for you fuckers who's like, well, if you've never been to prison, don't speak on it. Fuck you. I am sick of black people, I am sick of low class poor ass people taking pride in some bullshit like going to prison or being able to survive the fucking hood that shit it, it crack, it, uh, I'm going on a rant because people like well if you ain't been there you don't know, if you ain't been in the hood don't talk about the hood, if you ain't been in jail don't talk about it motherfucker you proud of that shit yo low expectation having ass Ooh, big fucking accomplishment Maybe you know and your dumb ass shouldn't have been there in the first place. But anywho, these people, the distractions are eliminated. 
So when you get to a point where all of your choices are pretty much decided for you due to circumstance, personal tragedy, you have a clarity that you will not get when the distractions are present. It's just not going to happen because there's so many distractions. There's so many things to pull your attention, to occupy your time that essentially will keep you from being as successful as you possibly can be. These things will hold you back. These things will just, it's, it's almost like an anchor of to your success. Your success is a ship and there's this chain to this anchor and these distractions are, are, are the anchor. Once those distractions are gone, you can do amazing things. You can do incredible stuff. The storage auction business taught me how to hustle on a level I didn't think was possible. Some of the stuff that my partner and I pulled off has my mind boggled some of the deals we made because we were put in a position where we were forced to make it happen didn't always work out there was a lot of failure there was a ton of failure there was a copious amount of failure on the table there was shit that didn't go right i blew a thousand dollars on the unit money down the drain but this is the thing that really surprised me with that as we're going through this stuff i became mentally tougher I developed a level of mental toughness I never had before. You know, even when I was in the military, even growing up poor, I didn't have that mental toughness that came from constantly having to deal with situations and having to come up with a good answer. When I was in the military, it was two terms, go or no go. Either you passed or you didn't. You didn't get a 60%, 70%, 80%. Either you made that shit or you did not make that shit. It was very clear and stark because in war, that's what happens. Either you get shot or you don't get shot. Either you shoot or you don't get to shoot. It is very, very clear what's real important when you're in battle. It's real clear. And I'm not talking about the geopolitical considerations. I'm talking about... That guy on the battlefield facing that other guy on the battlefield. It's real clear. Either you're going to kill him or he's going to kill you. It's real, real clear. And when the distractions are pulled from your life, it becomes abundantly clear. Talk to anyone that has survived cancer or survived a major illness and came through with a certain level of clarity. You'll notice that these people are not the same folks who they were before, when they got sick. Things that were important to them before, not important now. There, there's a clarity that comes from having to examine your life from a position of humility and weakness. When you are just ass the fuck out. It, some people don't come back from that journey. Some people opt out. Some people commit suicide. Some people become drug addicts, alcoholics, because it is such a damning proposition to go through something so arduous, so crazy. And if you can go to that point where you have that personal tragedy and you're able to essentially construct an airplane on the way off the cliff it will increase your self-confidence but more importantly it will increase your hazard repository of designs plans of ways for you to figure shit out when things are going sideways or literally the trucks going off the road I mean, it is just like that. So for many of you, you need a personal tragedy for you to shift to the next gear because your life is too good 
And when I say too good, I'm not talking about you're drinking champagne every day and Bentley the butler is popping up with some croissants this morning. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you're in the fucking hood. You're living in the projects. You've got PlayStation. You have government cheese. And you are living well enough not to be concerned to fucking change your life. That's called having it good. When you have it that good, the impotence, I said impotence, because I'm, I'm going to, it's a play of word, that you can't get stiff enough to fully penetrate a new situation. It makes you impotent. It makes you mentally and physically impotent because your life is so good that you can't bust new nuts. You can't do it. Now, you're out there in the wilderness and that bear is on your ass you, and you're running and every day that bear is on your ass and you're eating nuts and berries. Motherfucker, you get lean. You get wiry. You're out there every day. It's like, if I don't run, the bear is going to eat my fucking ass. So you're no longer impotent because you, you're moving. You are moving, but you're not just moving in a static situation. You're moving in a very dynamic situation. You are on the fucking move of your lifetime. Because if you don't move, you die. You don't... Hold on. Good Lord. All right, I'm back. If you don't move, you are... You're toast. It's, it's a wrap. It's over. And if for some people, they don't have to create these circumstances because they exist. For some of you, you're going to have to create that kind of drama in your life for you to move to the next level. Like the people who wait to the last minute but always seem to be able to do well on that exam. Because they've trained themselves to do well under pressure. They have trained themselves to excel when the chips are down. Good way to learn how to deal with life, but you also have to train yourself how to amp up and power up at will versus waiting on calamity or a deadline or some stuff that's just going crazy in your life. Now, I will give you another example of how to create personal drama in your life to increase a better life. I didn't put this, I've never put this out in the video. When I wrote my first book, I did a Jedi mind trick on myself. I actually acted like I was broke as shit. This, this was the deal. I had money. Okay, when we closed down the business and sold stuff, I had six figures in the bank. When I, but when I sat down and wrote the book, that's six figures. But knowing what I know about the human condition and how comfort will supersede success, I did this. I put myself on a regimen. I have to write X amount of words a day, and it was some ridiculously low, and it was kicking my ass, like 200 words a day was something like that. I had to do it, and if I didn't write 200 words a day, I couldn't go out. And even when I went out, I limited myself to going out once a week and one drink at my favorite bar. That was it. Because I had to make that book happen. I treated it like if I didn't get this book done, my life was going to be over. It was like either do this book or fucking die. And I know for many of you that's going to sound like extremely over the top, too just crazy, just bonkers. But if you're trying to do something significant with your life, if you don't have that kind of urgency pulling you along, or I should say biting you in the ass, because people tend to run faster when they're being chased by something than they're running to something, unless it's a cookie or something. But that's what I did. That's how that book, because if I had sat back like, you know, I got time, I got money, I can um, go to, the, you know, Greece, go to the French Riviera, hang out for a few months. I 
could do that. That book would never gotten done. It would never gotten done because I wouldn't have had the drive or the the mm, I need to make it happen in me. But I had that. I had to have it. So what I'm telling you is, if you don't have personal situations that are extant, extreme, create them. So back to the concept. This person was pissed at me. I told him, and I understand. I did this for a reason. This is probably some of the craziest advice I've ever given anybody in the consult. Um, this person's young, and I say, quit your job. And then this is when the yelling began and the fear came out the room. It's like, quit your job. Now, understand, I will, I'm going to tell this to everybody. There's more to this I can't really talk about. But he was very, very upset. He was um, about to freaking lose it because I had pinned, you know, the, the cozy life. Because, long story short, dad owns the business that he works in, and dad's a millionaire. And when dad dies, he gets everything, and everything's about 10 million. He has no drive whatsoever to do anything significant because he doesn't have to just doesn't have to and I told him that I was like you will be worthless because you have no other purpose because you know if you don't do anything in life and dad's like 85 so it's coming in the, you know, it's coming it's coming very soon and um, you don't have to do shit you don't have to do shit and you know it's just not in the cards for you unless you take a radical move and that's where all the cussing and the whining and the excuses came out. It's like, quit the job. Go out and do your own thing. You know, take 5000 bucks, go to a new city, and see what you can do. Because, see, this is the thing. I know that I can survive some bullshit. I lived in a house with crackheads. I was homeless. Am I going to go out there and do that shit right now? No, don't have to. Did that shit, got the t-shirt, ticket stub, don't need to do it again. But just that memory alone of what can happen to me if I allow myself to fall asleep at the wheel is enough to keep a fire burning under my tender hind parts every day. I mean, sometimes I have to make myself take days off. Make myself take days off because I know what it's like to be 100% ass out just so ass out that I'm talking no food. I'm talking just really on the edge cracking up. Ass out. So for anyone that really wants to be successful, you're going to have to remove the distractions. You're going to have to treat yourself as if you have an emergency situation. And I'm not saying you have to quit your job. But you're going to have to pull that Jedi mind trick on yourself. You're going to have to learn how to play mind games with yourself. I was in my wallet this morning and I forgot I had 500 bucks cash. I had completely forgotten about it. There was a time in my life I would have not forgotten if I had 5 bucks in my wallet. Because it was just that fucking pressing. I could pull I was like, oh shit, I got 500 bucks in there. And the reason is, you know, and this, this will be another video. It's about creating abundance not to flex not to say oh i got this it's because you don't know what the fuck life's gonna throw at your ass you have no clue there's a part of your life that you control and you direct and there's another part you have absolutely no control a lot of times wonderful things come from this space at other times the boogeyman the big penis in the sky comes from that place and if you don't have excess and abundance, it's pretty damn hard to handle. And then you really are truly ass out. And I don't want you to be really and truly ass out. I've been there. It's not a pleasant place. It's not a beautiful place. And some people do not come back ever from those places. So for those of you who want to take it to the next level, for those of you who want to be as successful as you want to be purposely remove all distractions from your life when I was in the military I remember 
how a letter was one a life defining moment because you know back in the day people actually wrote letters and you know you get mail call and everybody was sitting there hoping to get a letter that someone from wherever they came from whatever small town whatever place that was would come forth with a letter saying hey I care about your musty ass enough to sit down and write letters and I saw the looks of people who didn't get letters it was a lonely dogged oh woe is me fucked look because see this is what happens especially with the Marines they take away all your rights and give them back to you as privileges and when you give them back you are damn happy to have them you can't it's just like oh god I'm, I can leave the camp I can go into the veil I can go into the economy and spend a little money and look at some pretty girls those are some memories that dudes are in the military they're some of the best memories because the distractions were removed when you're in basic training there ain't well when I went to basic training there were no distractions that was a lot of hard ass work it was a lot of fucking yelling and you get better in those situations you become a better person you become increasingly mentally agile if you're open to the experience there's some people they can't deal with it they they wash out but remove the distractions create a personal emergency in your life see you know i mean it's it's this is dangerous you know what this is probably the most irresponsible video i've ever done in my life because this is extremely dangerous but when people say hey glendon what did you do to be successful because everyone is looking for magic jelly beans they're looking for cookie cutter solutions that a you do step a b and c and yield result d e f or cash that's what they're looking for and if they don't get it they, they stamp their little feet and whine and bitch and scream like children what i am giving you is what helped me get to the place that i am where in the middle of the day i can fucking drive around my neighborhood and do a video and talk to you while your ass is at work working for someone you don't like doing the job you fucking hate so what I'm trying to give you is the larger formula to success because cookie cutter methods are short term success tools if it's a process or it's a formula that can be easily duplicated you're going to have success short term with it because it's easily duplicated and that's what so many people want. When you do the hard work of building some shit, of going through the fire, you build something that is much more sustainable long term. I, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you the storage auction book thing. I thought that was going to last six months to a year. Had no clue it would last two and a half, almost three years. Had no clue. I was totally, totally shocked. But... The way that it was built, the way that it was set up, it was set up with honesty. I never told anyone that storage auctions were easy. Matter of fact, I said, this may be the hardest shit you've ever done. Many of you won't make it. That's how I came out with it. And it was probably in the top five of the most successful things I've ever done in my life. So there was no market. There, there was no one talking about it. I rolled the dice and took a chance. Took a chance got television deals, uh, consulting deals, business deals, all kinds of stuff came from that first book. That came about because I created my own personal emergency situation. If I had like, oh, I could do this whenever, take my time. And let's talk about that. That old business of taking my time to do it right bullshit is fear. You will learn more from fucking up than you will from being slow and methodical on some shit that you don't know if it's tested. If it takes you 10 years to write a book and the book sucks, you have not wasted 10 years of your life, but it's taking you 10 years to find out some shit you could have found out in six months. Six months, 10 years. Which one would you pick? Because as one of my writing mentors said, if you take a stick and stir up some shit 20 times, you still have shit. It's just how it is. So create 
your own personal emergency. If you have excess, put it in a savings account. Put it in a, a, a CD or something. No, you're not going to make a lot of money. But take the money away from yourself. Put yourself in a situation where you have to perform. You have to perform. When you do that, you will find out stuff about yourself you just currently don't know. Because you don't have to find that stuff out. You don't have to deal with that stuff. So many people are moving away from struggle, moving away from doing stuff that's hard in order to not go through those experiences. You're actually robbing yourself of the building blocks of success. Every person that I know that didn't inherit their money has gone through some extreme bullshit building their personal success. Everyone that I know, I mean something. I'm talking divorce. I'm talking family just leaving them. I'm talking about kids don't. I'm talking major shit. And the question is, do you want success or do you want comfort? Because there's a very high cost to freedom. All right, this is Glendon, and I will see you on the other side.